everyone, it's Lisa. Today on Doodle Draw Art, we're going to paint a birthday card. And all I'm going to be using is Prussian Blue and Lemon Yellow to make some nice pretty greens, and also Crimson and Violet to make some uh, muted pinks and purples. So I'm going to get started using just a sheet of watercolor paper that I've cut to card size, and I've also folded some cardstock to form the outside of the card. So what I want to do is just make a really muted background that I'm going to be able to write the words Happy Birthday over the top of. So first of all, I'm just going to... Um, I've been <laughs> testing some colors here just to see what I'm going to come up with. But what I have on here is um, my uh, lemon yellow and my Prussian blue. And here I've got my crimson and my violet. And you can see that I've already been mixing them a little bit just to get my colors established. And I use my color mixing chart to help me decide which colors to use. And now I can see sort of the, the tones and the hues that are coming up. So I'm using this for my stems and this for my flowers. But the background and, and the whole idea of this piece is to be very muted so that the words happy birthday are the most prominent thing on the painting. So I'm going to work with um, just a flat brush first to paint some flowers. So I'm starting off here with this mixture of um, crimson and violet. And I'm just going to make some very basic five petal flowers all over this card. So here's one. It looks like a star. It doesn't really look like a flower, but you know, flowers can be star shape. And I'm going to make a few more here. Just bring them around a little bit more circular. And another one here. So this is a similar style to the Superhero Hearts uh, card that I made on Valentine's Day. It's layers of color which build up to give their own dimension. So this layer of flowers is going to be my background layer and it's very muted. And they're all sort of um, similar styles of flowers. So I think that's enough for the background and this is drying as I go because I'm working under bright lights here but if you weren't working under bright lights then you might want to use a blow dryer just to um, make it dry a little more quickly. So now I'm just going to add a little slight different tone to my to my paint by adding a little more purple. So you just mix the colors that you like. They don't have to be the same as mine. They have to be the colors that you prefer. So here I go. Now I'm just going to make some more flowers. These ones are going to actually overlap on the the surface of the ones that I've already done. So this is going to be a slightly bigger flower. And I'm trying to ignore my background. I'm trying to just paint these flowers in their own in their own right. Now I'll do one here. Because the idea is going to be to have a whole layer, a whole built up layer of flowers. And you can see the background flowers are still visible. Paint it right off the edge. It's good to do that. It makes it look as if you've sort of zoomed in on something. All right, another one. And now I'm going to add even more. Actually, I'm just going to grab violet. Very dilute. And I'm going to make a couple of large flowers over the tops of these background flowers. And now I'm just going to make a few tiny purple flowers to fill in these little areas that have nothing at all, just a couple. Okay, so now while I wait for this to dry, I'm just going to go in with my um, 
round brush and I'm going to take this green that I've mixed and make some swirls to indicate mm, leaves or stems, vines, that sort of thing. I'm just going to do those in the areas that are left over, just little squiggles, squiggles and swirls. And this is going to dry lighter than it goes on wet and that's good because it'll give it a little more uh, subdued lightness so that when I write my words over the top of this um, they're gonna pop because this is what I guess we're painting is more of a background than an actual like piece of art this is more just um, just a hint of the things that are here in the page all right just a little bit here okay so something else that we could do would be to add some splatter but I think we'll maybe wait and do that after we are finished so I'm just looking at this I'm going to add a tiny bit of detail to the top layer because it's dry now just a tiny bit another just another coat of very thin um, violet over top so I'm just going to pull some violet here and get some color on my brush and keep it nice and loose not too dry and I'm just going to add a few little veins onto these flowers just to give them some not much really not much just enough to make them um, have a bit of detail too much and we'll spoil the look so for these further back We'll just add fewer details and then even more water. And we could add some center detail as well, just a few little dots. Not too dark. Again, it's going to dry lighter, but you don't want it to be overpowering. Because so we're going to be writing on this with black. So this is, like I said, just a very quick um, watercolor birthday card. You can make it for your mom. You can make it for your friend. I'm going to be giving this one to my aunt because it is her birthday. All right, so here are all my posies. Now I'm just going to let this dry and I'm going to come back and do the words. All right, so there are a few ways that you can do this. You could work with the black watercolor that came with your um, with your kit, and just make sure that it's as thick as you can get it. Hardly any light showing through, so that you can get these lines that are very opaque. Um, that's not my preferred method. Um, I'm going to work with uh, calligraphy ink, but you could also work with a sharpie. As long as your paint is perfectly dry, and in fact it should be perfectly dry no matter which method you choose, make sure you touch it to see that it's dry, and if it feels cold, it's not dry. Not quite. You have to wait a little bit longer until the paper just feels like room temperature. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some ink here, and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to paint the words right on the card. It's just going to say happy birthday. So I'm going to just fill up the center here with the words starting up here. And a nice exclamation point because we're excited that it's her birthday. All right, so I'm just going to go back in and thicken up my capital letters at the beginning here just to give them a little more punch. Just by tracing over them a second time, giving them a little bit of body. And all right, so I'm just going to see how that looks over my purple. And I'm thinking it looks pretty good. So the option that you have as well is to add, um, oh, let's do that, um, a little bit of splattering to our page. So all you have to do is just um, get a little bit of something here on your brush. So I'm just tapping my brush lightly and adding some little splatters on the background area of my card. This is sometimes tricky. You sometimes get bigger blobs than you want. Sometimes you get no blobs at all, which is happening to me right now. That's 
better. All right. I always like the look of splatters. I don't know why. What do you guys think? What do you think of splatters all over? I think what it is is that it makes the work look less deliberate. You know, like if something was wrong, it's like, oh well, it's handmade. <laughs> and those blobs can maybe, something that you see that doesn't look right, you might just think it's one of these little splatter marks. Um, so yeah, maybe it's my cheat. Maybe it just makes it look. Um, uh, there. So now I'm just going to wait till it dries. I'm going to glue it on and I'll write a message on the inside. Probably what I'll do is I'll cut a piece of paper and tape it in here as well to write my message on to wish her a happy birthday. So I'm really happy with that. It was just a quick, um, you know, what do you call that? Improvised birthday card. And I'm going to give it to my aunt to wish her a happy birthday. All right. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.